But I soon learned they had migration stories of their own. Thanks a lot for inviting me up here to your place. You're welcome. Enjoy um, having me. It's we're, gorgeous here. We're glad to share the, uh, the information about our place here. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit about the place, how long you've lived here? Um, this is the uh, junction of Canyon de Shea. Uh, we got this piece of land from my great-grandfather. This is our Hogan. We have a story of where we came from, and uh, and our story, our origin, is a very sacred story, and it, it's passed on uh, through generations, and that's your your life and your way of uh, where you came from. And I'm sure that these two has some other information too. Mm. Phil Bluehouse explained. Well. Um, adding to what Letty has to say, um, there is a creation and journey narrative that we go back to, and this narrative is quite sacred. Um, it talks about the event of creation. We call that a uh, Hajine in Navajo, or at the time of beginning. Do you have any stories about where the ancestors, the, the ancestors yeah. of everyone may have come from? It depends on how you, there, there are discussions about uh, uh, um, migrations. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we migrate from our mother onto the earth's surface, that is a migration narrative. I mean, we come from one being to another. That's a migration. And we believe that we were created here in the four sacred mountain area. This is where we came up from the ground. In other words, we were birthed into this place, just like we are all birthed by our mother. I also have my own sense of what that story might be using science. I'm a geneticist. And everybody around the world is very closely related to each other. Mm -hmm. We're all part of one big family. In fact, we're all related to people who lived in Africa as recently as 50,000 years ago. That's only about 2,000 generations. Mm -hmm. So you have distant relatives living all over the world who are essentially African. Mm -hmm. And you yourselves are essentially African. So am I. Can I show you some pictures of some of the people we've met? Yeah. These are people known as the San Bushmen. They live in southern Africa, and they are some of the oldest people on the planet. That are these the people that have that, 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 that clicking, clicking sound? Clicking. Exactly. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. Fascinating people. Now, the evidence is that the first people who left Africa followed a coastal migration route along uh -huh. the south coast of Asia, and they ended up in Australia, the Australian Aborigines. So you're basing this on the genetic trail. Exactly. <laughs> mm. Now these people who were in Australia, they mainly were more together as a, a group. You know, like more cohesive. More cohesive and uh, there are lots of different populations in Australia, speaking uh -huh. very different languages. They have different cultures, okay. different myths. Why do you call something that uh, a people will tell you a myth? as opposed to an experience that they had and they relive it over and over. Rather than calling it a myth, would be able to talk, call it something else because I, I have a real strong feeling yeah. about that. That, you know, if you call something a myth, it's a substandard event that does not that's, that's have any point. relevance because they are real as we understand them. They're not myths. And Absolutely, that's, 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 that's a important. very good point. And, and my bias as a scientist mm -hmm. is that I like to see evidence for things. Yeah, okay. So that was, that was the first migration out of Africa, according to the genetic results. Mm -hmm. that now the next one followed a slightly different route, one that went inland. I'm getting pretty good at this. And of course, it helps that I brought the family album along. And this man is a direct descendant of a person who lived in Central Asia about 35 to 40,000 years ago. Wow. And his ancestor is also the ancestor of most Europeans and Native Americans. Wow. He's a man called Niazov, who lives in Kazakhstan. Are you the same person that uh, did some research I noticed on the internet that says that the Native American people are somehow connected to yes. Central Europe? Yes, Central Asia. Central Asia. Yeah, that, that was wow. a paper that we published last year. Okay. That's good to know. What do you think of that? I, uh, I, I, you know, there's, and I was looking at a book from people from Central Asia, and I saw my cousin Emmett and Abraham 
yeah. auntie, auntie grandma buggy and <laughs> I said, my God, I got family over there in Central Asia. These were the people Mongolian like people. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Central Asia. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's it, right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the eye, he looks like Oriental. And then he's got uh, Negro features to some extent, and also um, uh, Caucasian, kind of all mixed together. So that's interesting, very interesting. These are the Chukchi people, and they're your they're distant cousins. Siberia. They're still living in northeastern Siberia. I visited them recently. Oh, they're the ones that have with the reindeer. This. With the reindeer. Reindeer. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've seen them on TV. Their home is. They're, they're yeah, the home looks like looking. a teepee. And the results show that they are your ancestors. They ultimately made that trip across the Bering Strait into the Americas. Wow. About how tall were these guys here? Um, about five eight, five, five six, eight. five eight. Yeah, about not tallest. too tall. Yeah. Uh -huh. And by looking at the genetic data we can estimate that as few as 10 or possibly 20 people were in that first group, the first wave of migration into the Americas. Yeah. My story about the journey of man came as no surprise to these Navajo. The idea of migration had been central to their own creation story since the beginning of time. The point is that somehow we're finally saying, acknowledging one another from the scientific realm and from the traditional realm, saying that, yeah, the puzzle is starting to fit together. Mm -hmm. And we complement each other. And we're all complementing each other. Our research tells me that the last stage in the greatest journey ever made could have been completed by only two or three men and a group of as few as 10 people. Just 10 extraordinary people. Once they got down there, they discovered that there were a lot of big grazing animals all over the place there, too. American buffalo, mammoths, all sorts of things. And they kept spreading south and spreading south. And in about 800 years, they actually got all the way down to South America. 